what is up? What is going on? Good evening. <laughs> and uh, welcome into another episode of America's Hometown Horror. My name is Mike. I am your host. We have another uh, Pack to the Gills episode tonight, so why don't we jump right the fuck in and get rolling. First and foremost, here's where you can find us online, in case you're curious about that. We're, uh, we have a website, which is ahpod.com. It's A-H-H-P-O-D.com. We're also on YouTube and Facebook. Just search for America's Hometown Horror, and you will find us. We're on Twitter, at Hometown Horror. We're on Instagram, at Hometown Horror Pod. And you can email us at hometownhorrorpodcast at gmail.com. Also, a brief reminder that we're now a member of horrorfacts.com, which is a great website and resource if you're a horror fan. You may have heard of some of uh, some other horror websites out there, like Bloody Disgusting or Dread Central. But if you're a horror fan, horrorfacts.com needs to be on your radar. And guess what? You go on there and go to their podcast section, and you can find our show right there. Uh, right there next to a bunch of other great horror podcasts. So how about that? How about that? And as you can hear, <laughs> I am joined by my co-hosts. We have everybody back in studio here tonight. Matt, Kat, and Andrew. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. What's going on? How are we doing? We're doing, doing great. We're yeah. getting there. Getting to be a little hot today. We're almost at the 4th of July. Almost mm. time for a little break from work. A little couple days off. Yeah. Fun mm-hmm. stuff. Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> what? What's so funny? All right, cool. Apparently, <laughs> you're just hilarious. I, I guess so. I know I'm not that funny. Just, she's just laughing at me. But uh, yeah, generally, she's not laughing with you. It's yeah, it's always, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. always at you. Yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> so, Mr. Odette, I know you weren't with us last week. What's been new? What's been going on? I'm sure you've had uh, some fun things you've been watching, or yep. uh, anything, anything good to report? Anything you want to talk about? I got a couple like quick. Views that I did. I did rewatch Jaws on nice. Sunday. Oh yeah, it's just because it was like a hot ass watch. morning, and uh, I saw that it was on Peacock. I was like, oh, I'll fucking throw that on. Nice, great movie. Movie rocks. I mean, we the don't best. gotta go that crazy about uh, going into the detail. Best. Um, random other ones I watched: Demonia, uh, 1990 movie. You'd like this, Andrew? Uh, Lucio Fulci movie. It is in English, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, it's not subtitles. <clears throat> nope. Okay. Uh, just super like crazy like ghost nuns fucking killing people and shit. It's it's pretty rad. Nice. And then I watched uh, this movie called Beyond the Door, uh, nineteen seventy four movie. Blatant Italian rip of The Exorcist. Movie fucking sucks balls. <laughs> don't don't watch it. It's very bad. Uh, that's those are my Beyond the those door. Are my quick there little nothing. rips right there. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. Uh, I think the mo- the thing I've felt the most passionate about hating over the last week are the uh, goddamn disgusting blue slushy down east ciders that those we tried. Those were so bad. Oh my uh, god. Way too sweet. Way too sweet. Everybody's sugary. been uh, lusting though. after if those. You shouldn't mm-hmm. have to cut a canned Dude. beverage. The sweetest no, thing I've did, ever tasted in my life. They just were don't drink a it. nasty, nasty. Way too sugary. <laughs> Some people need Vile. the sugar. I, yeah, I, I they're bad like, at drinking booze. I like, I, like sugar. Sugar. I like the watermelon sugar. Hi. Watermelon, watermelon sugar. Watermelon song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andy, my boy, with your Sonic the Hedgehog T-shirt. Anything, uh, any deep cuts you've been watching? Anything uh, going on? What's so going on? I know I speak a lot of uh, Grizzly Two: The Revenge. Yeah. I actually watched Grizzly. Grizzly One, absolutely. the one that led to the Revenge in Part Two. I don't know why they made a second one because yeah. that movie was absolute <laughs> trash. Which one was better, the first or the second? Oh, the second one was way better, just for the sheer factor that it was this like <clears> so <throat> out of control that it was perfect. The first one was too like. It was trying to be him. Yeah. The second one, they weren't trying to do anything except for being They just leaned into wild. it. Yeah. yeah. They just went with it. It was just a collection of moving pictures in the second one. Essentially. A motion yeah, picture. I, I'm, I'm good with that. Mm. So I watched that garbage. Okay. And then I watched the first volume of Love, Death, and Robots. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up Love, Death, cool. and Robots. It's actually really good. Yeah, I'm glad you told so me about that. that. Yeah, I've been <laughs> watching the third volume, which came out recently, and that show's awesome. I love Love, Death, and Robots. I I've just, seen them all except for the newest season. It, Kat, you would love it, too. Cause I think I watched a little bit of when you watched it. Before. You can have a very short attention span when you're watching this. Because mm-hmm. it's like 11, like 11 to 16 minutes. Like, I feel right like now. some of them were good and some of them were bad. Well, I think most of them are, I think, yeah. I think they're, well, they're all different, and I think most of them are good in their own way. Okay. I'd say, like, it's like a, probably a 75% hit rate for the first season. Yeah. <laughs> Even the ones that I didn't like that much, there were still good parts of it, and there were, it's like 10 minutes, so what's the right. big deal if it sucks? Yeah. yeah, but it's all different styles of animation, which is right up your alley. Yeah. There's different tones to different story. Like, a lot of them are horror, uh, some of them are comedy, some of them are action, but there's actually a lot of good horror ones in yeah, there. Yeah, maybe we'll give it yeah. a lot yeah. of monsters. Some of them are wicked a lot of cool yeah. monsters. Uh, the, third, the third volume, um, the the second one that I watched, it's it got a 
awesome creature in it, and it's pretty pretty goddamn good. So I can't wait to keep watching it. But again, like you said, Andrew, it's just it's a uh, dare I say a, a perfect show to uh, pop an edible and watch like yeah, a few I, episodes. I tore through the whole like, volume in one night. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was probably like yeah, probably two and a half hours. Minutes. Yeah. It wasn't even like <laughs> yeah. it was like watching a movie. And yeah. it's produced by David Fincher too, which is wild. Yeah, he directed like yeah. one of those specific episodes. Or whatever. Sweet. Yeah. Nice. Good stuff. Love, Death, and Robots on the Netflix. Anything else? No, that was it. All right. So, yeah, I I had Love, Death, and Robots on mine as well. Uh, Kat and I also checked out, I mean, it's super cheesy, but I've always wanted to check it out, and it's finally streaming on uh, on Hulu. God, don't get her started with John Mellencamp. (laughs) Um, So it was on Fox for one season. It got canceled. I can see why. It's it's definitely not great, but I'm going to see the first season through at least. It's called Ghosted. You remember this? It's got uh, Adam Scott and Craig Robinson. It's kind of like a knockoff, like, uh, comedy X-Files type thing. I know thing. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And yeah. it's, like, we watched, like, the first two episodes, and it's, like, it's okay. Like, yeah. it's it's right up my alley. I'm going to finish it. It's it's not the greatest thing in the world. Does it. Craig Robinson yeah. scream a lot? Actually, I don't think he screamed once. Yeah. Really? But that's, like, one of the, like, every <laughs> time he screams thing. makes me laugh. Yeah, it's funny as shit. Yeah. Like, him and, him and, he cracks me up, and this is the end. Yeah. I love that movie. Yeah. Lots exactly of screaming what I'm thinking that. about. Yep. Um, but yeah, basically the premise is like there's some secret, like underground, almost like a like the section of the FBI that is the X Files. They recruit these uh, two characters in to try and solve this supernatural mystery. But there's like different like quote unquote monster of the week episodes, like there were on the X Files. So it's definitely Fox trying to recapture some of that X Files magic in a more comedic sense. And it's a good idea for a show. I, I really wish they would have kept it going because they could have made it better probably than it actually is so far so i'll report back after we check out uh, the first season katrin have we watched anything else that i'm forgetting about here oh don't ask me I okay remember. well one thing i will ask you and i know that you haven't watched it and you probably didn't even know it was out there i almost sent it to our group text thread the other day did you see that the teaser trailer for hocus pocus 2 dropped no i didn't i'm gonna have to it, go back did, and check it out i did see some some buzz about it yeah i, I watched it I watched it. It's uh, it looks a lot like the first movie, pretty much. Well, it's got be. all the same. Does it have a Beta Midra? Uh, Bet Midra is in it. Uh, Bet Midra is in it. Oh, all three, all three of them return. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah uh, Sarah Jessica Parker, Parker, Parker like Bet Midler, and uh, the other one. The, yeah. the other guy. It's Mary, the other guy. Mary, yeah. The one girl. Rat race. Rat race. That's yes. right. I forget her name. <laughs> I always yeah, forget her name. Well, she's Marion. I forgot her name the entire the time that we did Hocus Pocus on an episode, which, yes, we did do that. Thank well, yes, because it's a spooky Midler's. movie. Mm-hmm. It Sarah is a Jessica spooky Parker movie. And the other one. Yes, yes. and the other one. The other it's one. like Elaine and the in brunette. Seinfeld. The, it's the other guy. It's, like, oh. it's my three favorite composers. Thank you, Mr. Kamara. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one thing that I, I kind of checked out this past week, I, a lot of my favorite podcasts are on like a couple week break uh, for for Fourth of July, so there haven't been a lot of podcasts that I listen to out. So I decided to try and uh, get back into some horror audiobooks, and I finished one in like two days, wow. driving around doing estimates. Uh, it's called Horror Store, one word, H O R R O R S T O R, and the O has like that Swedish like dots um, yep. over the top so basically it's an interesting concept and I, I did enjoy it um, it's like a haunted Ikea pretty much cool. it's like a fiction but it's like a different it's a different chain it's obviously supposed to be a rip it's supposed to be a rip off of Ikea but I would kind of compare it to like if if poltergeist happened inside like an Ikea store okay. over the course of one night just meatballs being thrown at you pretty much so they have like all like together. the quirky furniture and all that stuff and um, so basically the premise is that there's three employees that do an overnight stay in one of these stores which is called uh, Orsk is the name of the chain in this book um, because there's all sorts of like weird <laughs> vandalism and like things are breaking overnight so they dispatch this team to stay overnight to try and investigate what the hell's going on they come to think that this might be a haunting. They do a seance and all sorts of madness ensues. It's very much like a horror comedy. It's a good book it's written by a guy named uh, Grady Hendrix. The audiobook version of it was very entertaining. And at the beginning of every chapter, they have like a, uh, I guess in the, the actual physical book, there's like pictures of everything. But And they get more and more demented as the book goes on. But like the descriptions of this furniture they're very much like the ikea descriptions of furniture but they get more and more fucked up as the story gets more and more fucked up so they have like instructions but with frowny faces Pr- pretty stuff. much like that type of thing yeah. i guess if you have the physical <laughs> book so it's called horror store by grady hendrix 
it is uh, it's very interesting. I would recommend checking it out. Came out in 2014, uh, and I guess they're making it. Uh, last I, I I looked it up, I, they were trying to make it into a movie at one point. I think they're trying to make it into a TV show now, so you may see it pop up in the future. Cool. Yes, um, and also. I uh, decided to, when I finished that one, I downloaded 20th Century Ghosts by Joe Hill so that I could listen to The Black Phone. I read it. Mm. I did. I did and I've too. made it about a, qu- <laughs> a quarter of the way through uh, that short story collection, and they're pretty goddamn good. I think yeah. I, 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 actually, because I'm a dork, I uh, took 20th, 20th Century Ghosts out of the Plymouth Library a couple of years back, but I didn't f- make it all the way through before I had to bring it back. I thought you were going to say, but I didn't return it. No, I, I returned it. <laughs> I returned book it. Book it's going to be coming. Yeah, I know, right? The library. <laughs> Joy boy. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so maybe maybe a good segue here. That uh, So, yeah, Black Phone. That's what we're going to talk That's what we're uh, going to be talking about tonight. Yeah. The Black Phone. Dare I say, probably one of our most anticipated horror movie releases uh, coming up this year. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I know I read the story. Cat read the story, I which is did. Un- shocking, unfathomable to me. Just before you did as we well, Matt. To go okay, on. okay. <laughs> um, thoughts on the short story briefly before we jump into the. Me first. You're sure. At me. What did you think? You okay. just read. You, it's, it's fresh on your mind. You just finished it. So. Um, it was shorter than the movie. Uh, story. It's yep. a short story, but it's shorter than the movie. Uh, it was more to the point. There were a couple of different, there were a couple of differences, but I mean, mostly it was pretty much the movie. Yeah, you know, it was very similar. For the Albert being fat versus, I don't think he was a big guy in the movie. He was pretty, uh, like bulk. He yeah, was bulk. He Dude, he was Ethan, strong. Yeah, Ethan Hawke's pretty shredded. He was like, he was like <laughs> Christian Bale Batman. Uh, uh, kinda, yeah, like not like. Not like cut and chiseled, no, but just like, like you could tell just by his dad. I wasn't expecting, yeah, like when he's like, when, yeah. when he's got the mask on, he's sitting there with his shirt off. I was yeah. like, damn, Ethan Hawke. I wasn't expecting that. He yeah. balled um, up for sure. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like the um, I'll, like the, I feel like most of the dialogue in the story is word for word yeah. on the screen. So it's a pretty faithful adaptation, and it's expanded, obviously, to feature movie length. Um, I kind of like how the short story ended versus the yeah. movie ended. Yeah, but I, I agree. Abruptly, I agree. But. I mean, it's it's similar. But, again, not quite as expansive as the, yeah, as the movie. Yeah, right. But, uh, yeah, so you can check out the Black Phone story if you want to read it. It's in that uh, that same short story collection, 20th Century Ghosts by Joe Hill. It's only uh, seven pages. Well, it's like 20 PDF pages, but it was not just It was 20 book. pages in the book I had. Oh, it was from, oh. That's still, but it's it only a, you can <laughs> blow <laughs> through <laughs> that. I don't know. Well, Could you read it on your phone? Yeah. Yeah, you can. You, it's probably just like a font yeah. size yeah. adjustment. Well, you can blow through it really quickly. Yeah. So, all right, without further ado. If I can read it. If Kat can, can read, read it, it. <laughs> anybody can read it. Anybody can read it. That's true. All right, so let's talk about the black phone. Let's talk about the movie version of the black phone. Um, who would like to go first? Matt, you weren't here last week. Why don't you go first? Okay. Um, all right, so I kind of went into this not exactly with, like, expectations of it blowing my mind and being incredible. Um, especially after, like, just taking in the short story right away. Um, what? Nothing. No, I, I, I'm excited to hear your opinion because I already know their opinion. Um, so, so going in and watching the movie, the, the as it started playing out with the kids, I was like, all right, this is fucking just super Blumhousey, which right off the bat I knew was going to happen. Uh, it got in Ethan Hawke uh, is the best part of the movie by far. Um, and just, it could have, it just should have, they should have just fucking made it rated PG-13. It was, there was no, that was one of it had no balls too. at I was like, all. Why is this like, rated R? Yeah, mm-hmm. there was, there was zero balls to it. Um, other, there's some swears in it, but it's like just, they were dumb. Like, it just, I don't know, it, it had a couple moments where you kind of shock laugh just because the girl was fucking hardcore. Say it. Huh? Say it. Say what? We sucked. Yeah, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't that great. Oh, no! Yeah. I am, I am, I was, I'm not, sorry, I'm not man. happy to report. <clears throat> this movie sucks. Yeah. I, I won't go as far as say it sucks, but I will say it's I'm, not worth yeah. going and spending the money at the theater to see. No. Uh, it's not going to blow your mind. It's not going to. Ha- it doesn't hold up to any of the hype. No. Which of and course it's very the, flat. This is another one of those movies that all the critics are just filleting. Oh my god, it drives me insane. I, I mean, again, I, I think this contributes to my disappointment. Stop reading any reviews and watching trailers. You can't watch a commercial for a thing without seeing like yeah, seeing I got, Rotten Tomatoes I got a no trailer and, shoved down yep. my throat. It's, yep, yeah. I didn't want that, and yep. that came down. I was like, yep. oh well, now I, I just saw just, the whole movie. I just like, kind of pulled my phone out and fucking. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. It's just too now, much. Now see, I, I think I kind of <laughs> fell on. So you said you didn't have sky high expectations for this. I had very high expectations for this movie, and I was let down massively. So yeah. I, this movie doesn't suck. It's not great. 
it's really not great. It's another underwhelming 2022 release. I guess I was just expecting more. And I did throw this out in the group chat the other night, but I think I, I just feel like everything that was in this movie was in the trailer. Yeah. I mean, there's well, only so much source material. Right. Right. Um, it, that's not necessarily the movie's fault. It's more the fault of the marketing team that puts together the trailers. But ultimately, I just left the, feel, the theater feeling underwhelmed. I felt underwhelmed when I left. I, I'm glad I had a couple of days to decompress and think about it a little bit more and, and just kind of let my initial disappointment wear off. But it kind of really hasn't worn off. I'm still underwhelmed. I'm still disappointed. And I think and maybe, maybe this just is more of the state of movies these days. The plot progression was so straightforward. There were no twists. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing at all. It was just things happened and the movie ended. I don't think you need a twist. Why do you need a twist with every movie? I mean, there kind of was a little twist, but I mean... Oh, I mean, what, with the part where like they all like had an influence on how he ended up getting out of the situation, like that twist? No. Like, I like thought that like part the was kind of cool. Where they were? Yeah. Oh, the okay. house is next kind door. Of, yeah. yeah. I thought that was kind of cool, though. Like, the <clears> back, <throat> the, that, like oh, this guy, he started digging, because he started digging the hole, and then he didn't finish it. Mm. And I was like, well, why the fuck were you digging the hole? Yeah. yeah. But then it all kind of tied in at the end. So that was kind of interesting, I guess. Also, I couldn't agree with you more when you said that this movie has no balls. There's yeah. nothing scary about this movie no. at all, in the least. There the was, least. Uh, I read one thing that uh, the direct Derrickson had influence from Guillermo del Toro's The Devil's Backbone. I saw that too, yeah. And that, reading that, I kind of was like, okay, like I can see that, like for sure, with like all the little ghost kids that kind of fucking come mm -hmm. in and out. Um, definitely had that same aesthetic and look. So I was like, okay, that, I guess that's I, if he was trying to replicate that, he did that. Mm -hmm. So that, that's that was kind of like a little pull that I had. But. Yeah, I guess I was just expecting <clears throat> more scares from the same team that brought Sinister, because I think Sinister I was, was one of the scary, scariest movies. Yeah, that no too, like, there was like no violence. No. Also, a decent performance by Ethan Hawke. I was kind of a little underwhelmed with him too, Barely to be see honest. His face. Yeah, the character, so. the character was the character. I thought was, I mean, what was his motivation? Why the masks? I thought for sure that his face was going to be fucked up or yeah, something underneath that. Nice. Obviously, spoiler spoiler territory here. Um, I just thought there'd be more to him. I thought there would be more to the story. Uh, but I mean, with that being said, I don't think it's without some redeemable qualities. I mean, the soundtrack was good. I'm a sucker for Fox on the Run. It's a great song. The soundtrack was good, and I actually thought it was kind of. You mean the dazed and confused soundtrack that they wrote? Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. I thought the relationship between Finney and Gwen, the brother and sister, that was a high point. It was definitely, you know, as an older uh, as an older brother to a younger sister, I can relate to that for sure. It looked great, shot well. And I also, th I think there's something to be said for the fact this was a movie about the 70s that wasn't nostalgic for the 70s. Like, this wasn't, like, shot in, like, a bright color palette. Something like Stranger Things or, like, Fear Street that was, like, was longing dull. for the, the era of the 70s. This was, like, a gritty, dark It was very look similar back to Sinister. At a, Grainy, yeah. you know, a, a shittier scenes. time in American history. So, I don't know. And I guess, you know, Scott Derrickson, the director, admitted as much that he kind of doesn't hold nostalgia in the same regard as other, you know, people do because he had a shittier childhood growing up. And he, he uh injected a lot of his childhood upbringing into this story which were some of the parts that were expanded on so mm -hmm. he did say he held back on like a lot of yeah like going too far with that it's like well yeah. dude you're if you're gonna make a fucking r-rated movie, rated movie go mm, let's go for it yeah. i want something well you wonder if like since there are so <laughs> many kids in this movie if they did have more violence and stuff and they had to cut it out so they cut out one part that I did read. Um, it was when Gwen, uh, the younger sister, is getting beaten by the father yeah. in the kitchen. Um, I guess they did cut out some of the actual like, more explicit violence in that. But I mean, but you could have used violence more throughout the movie than in that scene. Like yeah. you could have been him killing the other kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah like that's something. I want to see some kids get murdered. If you I'm barely even this. get any like. Well, you barely <laughs> yeah. even get. Yeah. Yeah. Why am I watching? There's yeah, like yeah, right. even little description on like what happened to them. Right. There's, to, that's like, right. There's that's just, my there's biggest nothing. problem. There's nothing. Yeah. You don't know why the grabber is the grabber. Like, yeah. what happened to him as a child? I'd like to know mm -hmm. that. I'd like to have some sort of. Because they definitely alluded background. to the fact that he alluded to the fact that's that probably some how shit he was happened treated. to him yeah. when he was a kid. Like, but nothing. nothing. I think I just, I just thought that it was the same kind of situation where he was like by his father because yeah. he would sit by the door with it's, the belt. Right. Like, just with yeah, his I mean, it was kind of yeah, yeah, it was kind of already implied. It's certainly implied, was, yeah, for sure. But I, I liked it. I know. I was going to say so. I thought it was a great movie. Okay, so I'm glad we have a dissenting opinion here. 
here. So why did you like it? I was on the edge of my seat wondering where he was going to like go next or what he was going to try. It was like escape the room, pretty much. Yeah. So you're wondering, like, all of a sudden he pulls this thing out from, like, the wall, the cord, and you're like, well, why did someone have a cord to begin with? That was the cord from the phone, right? So mm -hmm. then you like, but then he magically puts it up on the wall thing, and like, how did Through the carpet? Thing? Yeah. I was like, like, bullshit, buddy. Why yeah. did you do that? Yeah. Like, why? And then, that didn't make sense to me. But then, like, the whole freezer thing, and the way that the kids were trying to help him out, and, like, I was kind of, like, rooting for him. Like, obviously you're rooting for him the whole time. Yeah. Mm. Um, I was rooting for him. No! <laughs> no, you weren't. Actually, kind of, yeah. No, I, I liked I liked the child. I don't, I don't know his name, but the kid that, the kid that played. Finney. He looked so I familiar, him. and he wasn't in anything. No, I, was no, like, we, I know this kid. Yeah. We he looked this up after the movie, yeah, and I, I, really I was like, I know you from his something. Sister's his, sister's awesome. awesome. his sister's character. His sister's character is also a good character. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was a strength of the movie for sure. Was their relationship and yeah. their performances. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it. Also, I, Jeremy I, Davies, by the way, playing the drunk dad. He's good in everything that he's in. He well, just plays it, a perfect shithead. Sorry. It kind of goes back to that whole murder mystery, trendy kind of documentary thing that's going on right now, where. It's like a live crime scene. It's something that could happen. Yeah. Like that's happening in our world right now. That's scared. That's a real world <laughs> thing. Those are things that I'm scared of. Like M that missing can kids. Missing kids is trending right now. Yes. Yeah. You look at Stranger terrifying. Things. You look at True mm -hmm. Detective. You look at the mayor of East Town or whatever. It was yeah, called. that's and good. Then you have too. this. You yeah. have. It's just it. That's the thing everyone's going for. And yeah. it has. It's because it has. Like, but it's it has been there pulled. for like ten years though. Yeah. It's been like that for prisoners like, even prisoners, and, which yeah. that movie makes this movie look terrible. Which because well, pr prisoners, prisoners, is, prisoners, is, probably, <laughs> prisoners <laughs> is probably one of the best movies. Yeah, you liked it. Though. What I, else I, you like I, about it? What else? I like that scene. I forget, like I kind of vaguely remember it, but it was the Pink Floyd scene where they played that song. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. forget. I Soundtrack forget, was but good. I remember. I loved it. Whatever, whatever that part was, I was like, oh yeah. But mm. I like. Now I totally forget because I didn't write down. So, sorry. Like, awesome. My favorite part. That was my favorite part of the whole movie. It was my favorite part of the whole movie, but yeah, I just I remember. I don't know I what happened, but about. there was music playing and... Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I think he was, like, trying... It's like, the end, like, right before when he was trying to, like, get out, kind of. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah. But I do remember that I really liked that part. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one parting thought again, and, and we'll, we'll we'll parlay this right into uh, 2022 horror movies that we've seen versus this. If Nope sucks, I'm gonna cry. I kind of was <laughs> upset that because they had the extended trailer. But yeah, now, I know. I but know. in a sense, I kind of do like it because now I have a sense of what it's about. Because I feel like before I had no idea. What it was well, about. see, it's it's almost impossible to avoid because you guys had both been avoiding Matt and Andrew. Both had been avoiding that newest trailer for Nope, and you pretty much had it shoved down your throat. Just by going to see this other movie, had you, had, you had no choice unless you. You know what I like? The, another trailer that I saw that I do want to see is that uh, Florence Pugh movie. Oh, that styles. looks good. Don't worry, darling. Yeah, yeah that looks, looks like good. a Stepford oh, Wives yeah. like Truman Show mm. mashup. Yeah, was that, that the H twenty four one? That's one of Chris Chris Pine, Harry Styles, Florence Pugh. That looks interesting. Yeah, is that what's her name? Olivia. Olivia Wilde directed that. Directed that. She's a director. And she's in it too. First directing. Yeah, I think so. Might be. Yeah. Directing movie. Directing movie. With the dude fighting the lion. Yeah. Oh, Idris Elba. Yeah. I love watching him throw a punch at a lion at the end of that trailer. I was like, oh Jesus. I also want to see Marcel the snail. Yes. I want to see the snail movie. That was at like another one we saw. That was at Men. That was Men. That's right. What a random trailer. Marcel the Shell. Marcel the Shell. Oh my God. So I was just sitting there and I was like, what are we oh, watching? Oh yeah, here? I absolutely. Want to we that. definitely talked about that during the men episode. So I, 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 I remember that. I remember that. So okay, perfect, perfect segue uh, here. Not a segue. Mm -hmm. What? What about Andrew? Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. What about Andrew's opinion? What about me? It's gonna be quick. So <laughs> don't worry. Move I thought. I'm sorry. Move I thought. On. I thought you had already gotten your jabs in, but I apologize. I got my jabs in. All right, now so, I'm all flustered. I don't all right, know what my jabs all right. are. Unleash the vitriol. Let's I go. Just, I just thought it was extremely. I almost fell asleep watching the movie. It was so fucking boring. So you I expected. So I had such high expectations for this movie. First off, the black phone. What is with that? Like, I'd like to like some sort of something to, to why that phone is the way it is. Like, mm -hmm. why it, mm -hmm. any of that? Like, I get that it's a short story, so you can only take so much from the short story. But you have creative license to make it whatever you want, unless they were just completely tied into the. The two kids clearly have some sort of clairvoyant. Yeah, do they have the shining? Are they the shine that's or what something? I like, too, yeah. it's like it's all. Well, like that's a, that's the reason too that the, the the sister was getting beaten in that scene was because because she knew too much. You know, he was he was the dad was saying when he was hitting her like your mother had this same thing, but she didn't have anything. You don't have it. Stop saying it. Stop doing it. But that's right. awesome because that's a great like starting point. But they didn't elaborate on any mm -hmm. of that. 
You know what I thought was very funny? I actually laughed out loud in the theater. Was when she goes back to him and he's sitting on this chair drinking whiskey. And she's like, promise you won't get mad. And he, she's like explaining to him the dreams. And he's like wasted listening to her. And he's like, well, what are we going to do? And it just cuts to them like driving. He's driving her down the street. <laughs> yeah. like, this guy's yeah. just slamming a glass oh, of yeah. whiskey. Absolutely oh, yeah. smashed oh, yeah. when it's 19th century. I, thought, I, just, different, different I times, found that very funny. Different so. times. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> just a dumb like. Yeah. Oversight, like, so like for yeah, sure. Just let's promote drunk driving in this movie. I think it's. Um, I think it also says something to the fact. And you like movies that are ambiguous and vague and don't necessarily tell you everything. But I feel like this, the fact that this doesn't tell you shit. It about doesn't anything. tell you anything. And like you said in the trailers, they told you everything. Yeah. There was no need to go to this movie. This was a cat pick if I've ever seen one. I didn't pick it. You would have, though, because you really <laughs> liked this movie. And see, I just, I never would have gotten that vibe going into it with oh, just, no. dude, the look of the masks, which were awesome, the look of the villain, uh, the team behind it, the writer of the short story, like, I just feel like it's, it's, some it's, flashbacks that's, that's to huge... like, to like, just some flashbacks to why he became some the grabber killer. and some yeah. of his previous yeah. kills, like, just Something. real short, like, yeah. like, the same way Sinister had, like, those grainy, like, snuff films, like, some of those in there, mm. like, of him killing... The other children, like, make mm. it real. If you're gonna yeah. make this movie, can I make it morbid and like, I nothing shocked me about this movie because it was unshocking. It was the least shocking I've seen. It was this was like a PG version of Sinister. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to even think of aside from the, the language, what made it rated R. I mean, I mean there was, the there was most the violent part violence is on the children. Axe, I guess the axe and the brother. Yeah, yeah the, the brother axe and getting brother. murdered, and then did someone lose their arm or something? What was that? Am I missing? I don't think, I think so. Think if something did lose their arm? I don't think so. Do, 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 do. Maybe some of like the, the some of the some of the gore that showed on like some of the uh, the ghost kids that were talking I, on the phone. Yeah, I think like, that was like what like it that. was. Like, yeah, they're a little yeah. caught up. Yeah, a little bit. They didn't like they didn't elaborate on that. Like, come on, make it a little more snuff film. Like that's what makes Sinister so good. The kid, when uh, they, she has the flashback of the kid playing pinball, and he carves the house number into the kid's arm. Yeah. Oh, yes. But even so that was like, nice. it's not something like, like it hasn't been done before. It, that wasn't the same thing that it's happens not... with Henry Bowers and the, it. The PG-13 yeah. movie, The Shallows. Was the it was oh, more yeah. gory than that. <laughs> right? The yeah. PG-13 film, I The couldn't... Shallows, <laughs> <I couldn't... laughs> as discussed on this podcast. <laughs> I couldn't look at her stitching up his, her leg. Yeah, I was I actually to surprised. Look away. I was like, I was like, oh, like oh my God. Perhaps you've never seen the 1999 classic the mummy <laughs> there's probably more gore in that movie <laughs> that movie June that movie whatever it is goes into his it's leg so it's much better that should be a new yeah. thing is this movie better or uh, every episode is this movie better or worse the than 1999's God. The Mummy uh, I, 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 I'm gonna be at about 80% that movie is I gotta, 80% I'm gonna have a learning curve on that <laughs> yeah, one it's gonna be 80% on God. the mummy the rest is uh, oh god alright alright what else what else did you hate about it anything else you wanna get off your chest <laughs> it was just so fucking boring. That's all I can say. Like mm. it's that's one of the most like I guarantee you in one year from now you won't remember this movie. You're gonna yeah. forget this movie. You're gonna forget this movie. You'll someone will mention it and be like, oh yeah, that movie, and you'll be like, uh, yeah, just it's, it's a, see, the most I, forgettable I, I movie of two. This I don't year. think so because I feel like this this okay. So so here's here's some here's some facts for you. Okay, um, this is doing great with critics and at the box office. Yeah, it's it. Um, I don't know what what the Rotten Tomatoes score is, but Rotten Tomatoes is horseshit anyway. Um, did finish, okay, number four spot in the domestic box office last week, opening weekend, but you have to think, this is an original horror movie that's pretty good. There, I mean, there's a, an Elvis movie out right now. There's still some fucking Marvel movie out. I would probably. have rather see the Elvis movie. Uh, there's, what's the other big movie Buzz out Lightyear. right now? Top Gun, there's a Buzz Lightyear movie out, so this finished number four, <laughs> but, um, made... Summertime. Tw- tw- yeah. 23 and a half million, in, uh, domestically and 38 point, uh, 35.8 million worldwide. That's so cool. Pretty free. good. That's cool. Pretty good for an original horror I don't movie. don't care about any of that. No, I'm just saying, <laughs> listen. None of that makes me like the movie. Oh, it made money. Cool. That's what a movie's supposed to do. It's I'm not trying smell. to, I'm not trying to sway you that no, you way. Couldn't. What you I'm, couldn't. what I'm saying is that people like this movie. Cool, I'm glad People are them. talking about this movie, <laughs> so I don't think it's going to, like, disappear into the ether It's going to disappear because it's not that memorable. They're remembering it now because yeah. there's nothing else to remember, and they're all idiots. Mm. I think the, the amount of money it's making has nothing to say about how good the movie is. It has so, a lot to say about how, how well it was marketed. Yeah, all I'm I saying agree. is that, I let's agree. bring it's it back popular. to another movie. Yeah, it's popular. It is popular. Yeah. 2016. The Shallows. The Shallows. <laughs> Mike, as you have said, that that could have been technically a blockbuster with how much money it made. It was a blockbuster. Have you, had you ever seen that movie other than the fact that Cat made you watch it? 
Um, we watched it on a plane, to be fair. Doesn't count as watching a movie, then, because you're on a plane. No. Well, Matt actually, hadn't seen it. I hadn't seen it. So that doesn't mean that because it's made money that it's going to be remembered. To be True. fair, I didn't True. even watch the first, like, 25 minutes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to put it on. <laughs> to be fair. And it was just playing on FX. Yeah. And it wouldn't let me restart so it. You missed uh, and the only way I could watch it to just stream it was in Spanish and I was like I've already oh, watched God. enough fucking Spanish movies yeah. so I'm not I'm watching this, this. Yeah. you know what you missed the first 25 minutes of that movie nothing nothing like Lally's ass uh, it's just like <laughs> and it's pretty much I got movies. right to the action I'm like okay yeah. cool mm-hmm. she got bit by a shark yeah. she's stuck on a rock mm-hmm. Here's where we're at. That was the thing I didn't know was that it was like a, a solo, a solo stuck in a place movie. That I was thought this was like a bunch of people getting fucked no. up by sharks. Oh no! So no. It's like that I didn't even know Blake movie. Lively was in it until yeah. fucking halfway mm. through the movie. So <laughs> I was like, oh okay, she's and in this. Seagull. I guess. Yeah. Seagull was great. Seagull. That's Seagull. Steven, Steven Seagull. Steven Seagull. Yeah. So yep. I think that really the next time the name of the seagull? that was the name of the stunt seagull in the movie. Yes. <laughs> to answer your question, the next time we will hear about the black phone is when there is a sequel, the black phone too, and. Thinking about yeah. the marketing, there will be one black phone. I'm telling there, you right now, if there's a black, black phone, phone next. <laughs> if there's a black phone. The black too, phone, too. This time it's personal. Two black phones. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they can do it just like a um, a prequel to how the phone became the way it was. The phone's just like, oh, I was tormented by my dad, that pager. That kid where it's like cut a my fax cord. machine just like beating him. Like, God the damn black it. phone, too. Electric boogaloo. <laughs> Black phone to revenge. Mom and dad, sax and pager. So again, what I was trying to say, I'm not saying, and obviously, like like Matt just said, and you have said, Andrew, the, the amount of money this movie is making is not an indication of quality. All I'm saying is that it's popular, it's doing well, so it might not fade into the background like you're thinking. It's good for horror. Also, in terms of marketing, a brilliant move. So the day the movie was released, uh, last Friday, or the wide release, I should say, turns out that uh, Universal announces a partnership with Blumhouse and they're bringing uh, a haunted house to Halloween Horror Nights on both coasts, so California and Orlando. They're calling this haunted house The Horrors of Blumhouse Volume 3, and it's a split haunted house between The Black Phone and Freaky. Cool. Are you stoked? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like your movie. Are, are you so... trying to get me more upset? Or... <laughs> I'm trying to... Oh, so they're ruining it by partnering with Blumhouse, which just, uh, I can't believe, I'm not surprised I was actually this was a Blumhouse movie. was a Universal mm-hmm. movie. When the what? Universal thing came out, I was like, oh. yeah, Un- Universal is a big partnership with Blumhouse. Like a I lot, so. a lot of their stuff. Blumhouse, yeah. Yeah. Bum, yeah. Bum, Bumhouse. That's Bum. what I feel I call like. It. This yeah. would not make a good haunted attraction. <laughs> no, I don't think <laughs> either of those movies smells. would. I think it's going to make for it a shit haunted house. house, like a bum, mm. house just like a house of bums. You just but, have uh, like Vince Vaughn's head next to a phone. Well, yeah, like, no one wants to watch. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's not. They're, they're going to have different scenes. They're going to have Vince Vaughn's head. Vince Vaughn's head next to the black. Oh my god. No, if they know what they're doing, they're just gonna have a fax machine and a pager and it's just gonna be attacking the black phone and the poor black and now we're gonna know why the black phone is so mean. So useless. Mean. So they've uh, they've actually done this before at Halloween Horror Nights. They've done horrors of Blumhouse houses before and they've featured they've been mashup houses like this, but they featured like Sinister, The Purge. Happy Death Day. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, outside of like, Sinister, yeah. I don't really think I like any Blumhouse movies. Insidious. Uh, I'd, I'd have to look Insidious at the list, because yeah. yeah. there's it's, some sneaky ones There's that some are sneaky good. ones, but like, well, I so was saying we should do an episode. We're, we're going to. We're going yeah, to. So we'll, we'll, oh, yeah, we'll tease. I listened to the episode yeah. last week. Oh. We'll, we'll, uh, <laughs> so I, I do. I don't think you're necessarily a teacher's pet. I was just... We have a couple of we have a couple of things to toss around post-podcast. Oh, okay. Good. So... Blumhouse did get out. Yeah. Yes, yeah, they that's they the random thing. Like mm. they do randomly good. They ones. do really mm. good. Ones. So you can um, have a good battle. All right, and so insidious. Yeah, well, he said that. Okay. Insidious is good. So we can we can talk about this uh, more in depth in a future episode. I would say for sure. Um, okay, rapid fire. Other twenty two har- twenty twenty two horror movie releases. Is the Black Kombat. Phone? Be- that was twenty twenty one. The beginning of twenty twenty one. Is uh, Black Phone better or worse than Scream Five? Worse. Cat. Scream's better. Andrew, that's so hard for me to. Pick. I think this, I think <laughs> wow, Black Phone really? is slightly. I hate better. Scream and oh. I hate this movie, so it's like a battle of two shit stains. Like that's really <laughs> that smells <laughs> better. <laughs> which <laughs> the, which <laughs> bum house? <laughs> no, um, I, I gotta go with Scream because I can't. It's Scream. Yeah. Wow. No, it's worse. Wow. It's worse. Oh. 
Okay. okay. Uh, is the black phone better or worse than Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Oh, uh, I like the black Man, phone better. Are... It's I... really tough. Some, we got some trash coming up. The new Texas Chainsaw was pretty awful. Yeah, terrible. I'll give I'm black gonna say phone. black yeah, phone. I'll take yeah. black phone just because okay. it's not that movie. Yeah. Uh, black phone or X? X. I'll, all t- day. I'll take X over that movie. I really I liked X. I know yeah. you guys didn't like it. But though. I will take yeah. X way over that movie. Um, I'm going X. At least X tried to do something a little bit different, I think. I just thought X was I fun. I think I like the Black mm. Phone. It was black way more fun than this okay. movie. Uh, Matt, The Cursed or The Black Phone? The Cursed. The Cursed, cursed was sick, dude. Yep. I'm, I gotta I'm, watch that. I still I really like that yep, movie. Still haven't seen it. I know you have. Uh, Cat, Choose or Die or The Black Phone? <laughs> no, I, seen I that. think I like Choose or Die. <laughs> that seems so on brand. <laughs> you should really I think watch I think I joked about I'm not that watching one. that movie. Oh my god. No, if you You're... like you like The Black Phone, then you said you like this movie better than The Black Phone. Yeah. So I don't want to watch that movie. No. No, no. You definitely don't want to watch that movie. It's good. It's a video uh, game movie. It's fun. All right, all right. Fair enough. Uh, guys, like a Hulu movie. this movie has to be better than Firestarter, right? I'm gonna give yeah. I'm gonna give Black Phone the Firestarter. Was Firestarter trash. was Absolutely, just Firestarter was awful. Yeah, that movie was so. Really bad. I kind of forget Man, what it was. Can we? Can exactly. we just? Can we it's go? It's a Zac Efron. The Zac Efron movie. Oh, right, 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 right. Not necessarily. I mean, I can say that just got thrown out. No, but really, if you see, I'm. You guys got to watch the sadness on Shutter. That one I got to check out. I know you recommended that. Yeah. Can you do me a favor? Text me directly. Just anytime you think of a movie that. You'll like. Just text it to me because I, I can't. I, I'll be like, yourself. "What the fuck movie was he saying?" Be an adult, write it down. Mm. Be an adult. Be a man. Uh, all right. your tires. Be a one, man. Right one more. Down. One more. And uh, my edible just kicked in. Uh, okay. Uh, the black phone or men? Men. Cat. Uh, I think I'm gonna uh, go with the black phone. Oh, men was really. Rough. I'm going. I'm going men. 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 I mean, men, I men, like. Men, I guess men, I'm thinking men. about it in terms of what I watch it again. I don't I would watch many again. Like I think once was enough for them. Yeah. I feel like you could learn so much cool. more watching that movie more and more. And more. I'm talking yeah. about Whereas like Black Phone. Which, you're which, gonna watch that again, and it's gonna be the same dumb movie. I don't. I don't need like deep introspection on this. I'm just saying, which movie did you enjoy more? <laughs> no, which like movie men did you enjoy more? more? Yeah. I enjoyed yeah. Men probably more than I did. At least Men was like challenging was, intellectually. Yeah, it made me think. Yeah. 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 And it was entertaining. Okay, that right. that yeah. I was on the edge. And of it was seat. much yeah. much much way better of a movie. Way better of a movie. Like well written. Yeah. Be- way yeah. better acting. Mm. I guess in that case, I okay. don't let us deter your opinion. No, no, you can no, like no, the no. trash no, that you like. It's, okay. it's fine. Nope, nope, nope. All right, cool. All right, well, before we uh, roll on to some uh, facts about this movie, why don't we pause for a quick word from our sponsors? We'll be back in ninety seconds. <laughs> It's official. The critics' decision is in. Spooky World is spooktacular. Enter the new black hole. If you dare. Or the new horror house of wax. This year, don't miss the real Jason, Bobby Pickett, or Alice Cooper. Phone the 24-hour Spooky World hotline. 508-838-0200. That's 508-838-0200. Spooky World is just west of Boston. And haunts every night from October 1st till November 1st. If you had the nerve, you'd phone 508-838-0200. It's America's Horror Theme Park. Spooky World. Don't be scared. I'm the super sweet monster with the super sweet new cereal, Count Chocula. Bethel. Here's the super sweet new cereal, Frankenberry. But I've got chocolate sweeties for monstrous chocolate flavor. Well, I've got berry flavored sweeties for monstrous strawberry flavor. Count Chocula. Frankenberry. Hi. Ah. <laughs> Frankenberry. Count Chocula. The new face of evil is going to scare you to death. Barrett's Haunted Mansion, it's a killer this year. Then be next door to the Abington Air Labs. Barrett's Haunted Mansion, eat, drink, and be scary. Go to bhmansion.com. And we're back. Certainly was fast. Sorry. All right, so some of the more interesting stuff I think about this movie is, you know, some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, did you guys notice the new Blumhouse motion logo at the beginning of this movie? No, it's not new. It's absolutely new. There's articles about it. You're wrong. 
<laughs> you're wrong. I said it the second it popped on no, in the movie theater, and you're no. like, no, it's not new. And I'm no. like, it's a thousand percent new. Uh, you don't even remember what movies you've seen. How would you expe- expect to remember the bumper before new. movie? Andrew? I was fist specifically deep eating a bag was. of Reese Pieces when that probably came on, so I missed it. All right. I didn't see it. So of basically, them. instead of the old Blumhouse logo where it's just like the weird haunted house shit that spins around, then it just goes to the logo. It's about 15 seconds. You get actually some Easter eggs from all of their like greatest hits uh, movies. Is it similar to a different opening? It remi- I've seen similar it to a different opening. Yeah, like is it, <laughs> is it like Grizzly Two, like no. Grizzly One, or is it like <laughs> similar? But no, because different? I feel like it doesn't look original, like the way that it. it, it I've seen it. It's not exciting. Did you see it? Because you didn't even know that it was new. Yeah, it's not because it's not new because it's I've seen it before. It's you've never seen it before. Nobody we're, had we're, seen we're, it. Before. We're going to <laughs> we're going to an example of what are, you mean like like a, a theater or a production team that uses this for their. Yeah, the logo. opening, yes. <laughs> Can you name it? Do you know who it is? Know. And it's even like a ballpark. That's a what I'm of them. Basically, what you're asking me is like, is this like some other thing from something else that somewhere? They just yeah, off. yeah. Yes. I, I don't know. It seems like it is. It seems very familiar. Anywho, you get a new Blumhouse Motion logo if you see this movie in theaters. I don't care what Cat says, she's wrong. You get some <laughs> Easter eggs on there. Here are the characters you can see in this new Blumhouse Motion logo. Michael Myers, because they did the new Halloween remakes. You can see uh, the cupcake from Happy Death Day. You can see uh, stuff from Paranormal Activity, The Gift, The Purge, Insidious, Puka. Remember Puka? Puka yeah. On Hulu? Uh, and there's actually a black phone on the wall in one of the scenes. So apparently Blumhouse, like is, uh, Blumhouse is uh, hitching their wagon to this movie big time. They think it's a huge release for them. Yeah. So. Apparently, wait, wait, wait. with their Hulu movies mm. and their Blum smell. So are you saying the intro piece is new? That's correct. Not the logo. Not but the logo is the same. The, the whole like, video thing. Oh, yeah, the you video know, they all thing. like like the there's like yeah, you know, like you said, those other production teams they do different stuff. Oh, so I didn't they watch didn't, that. They didn't steal it from everybody. I just saw the logo and I was like, the logo is the same. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I'll have to rewatch it. You can watch it on YouTube if you feel yeah. so inclined. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this movie is uh, directed by Scott uh, Derrickson, and the screenplay is by him and his uh, his writing partner C. Robert Cargill, and it's based on a short story by Joe Hill, who, no shit Sherlock, is Stephen King's son. So, again, I think those things just lead further to my disappointment of this movie because it's such a collection of horror talent that this, this movie Joe should Hill's be way movie. better than it was. Uh, no, because he direct uh, he wrote Horns. Oh, the Daniel right. Radcliffe yeah, yeah, yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, and I mean, big Nosferatu. screen. He did Nosferatu. That show stunk too. Actually, I was not yeah, a fan I, of that. I, I but in fairness, it, but... didn't a lot of like Stephen Scuff's uh, Stephen King's like early adaptations kind of. Uh, more of them more suck of... than don't. Yeah. yeah to be so honest. there's a lot. Joe Hill so. still has plenty of time to redeem himself. He's got some good short stories too. So I, yeah. I think for sure that there, there there could be some. More Maybe movies. he just needs to be a little more lenient because I feel like. He probably was too adamant about, I don't want you to change this. Which, this sounds like a great short story, but you need some. there needs some more depth to make this a feature film. So well, maybe I he think, was, maybe that he was, was all, too adamant, but are you sure it wasn't his influence? From, from everything that I read, this was all added, with his with Joe Hill's approval, it was all added by Scott Derrickson and C. What Robert was Gardner. added to it? Then? So, I mean... Like the minimal stuff? Like I'm saying like a change the story. All of of the detective work. Yeah. um, The whole mask element of the killer. That's not in the short story at all. Uh, In the short story, he only talks to one kid on the phone. Not a bunch of kids. He talks to the one kid that he played baseball against. Bruce. Bruce. Yeah. Um, What else? I'm trying to think. But those are like the big things. That's where they expand on a lot of it. But wouldn't that be even more interesting though? Like same way that like you like the shallows. One person... One right. villain, like for a horror movie, like they don't really do that anymore. It doesn't really happen very often. Mm. So if they had pl- maybe maybe that would have been more interesting. I'm just saying it was. It there was, was nothing. There was nothing to like. Well, I mean, there was plenty of stuff to like. There's nothing to put. Get it, it just that the fucking the movie makes me flustered and I hate it so yeah. much. In in the short story, bummed. they were much more descriptive of how like broken down he is too, and that how he was in like in like shambles and how he looked like he was like the child or the child. Yeah, he was oh, okay. like he was like it seemed like he had his spirits. He had no prison. energy and like that he was freezing and he had to like walk around to stay warm and like yeah. it, it was like very descriptive. Hadn't eaten was, in three like, days. Suffering. Sounds a lot more horrifying. Yes, it sounds a lot yeah. more horrifying. 
that, drinking water out of the back of the toilet. Which like he that did, thing. but he, he didn't actually did that in the movie. Yeah, sickly in the yeah, movie. Yeah, I went, ew, gross. What are you doing? Um, gross. And they said Grimace. Mm. Oh, oh was he purple? No, but I thought of that. <laughs> was the hamburger? Isn't that funny? No. Yeah, no, I thought of that. I was like Grimace, like the purple guy from McDonald's. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, the partner of the hamburger. Yes. Oh, okay. What yeah. is he? Uh, he's like a little purple he monster is, guy. I actually know what this. Is. I actually know you what know this. Of course, he yes. <laughs> Any guesses at all? Um, uh, he's on the menu. No, he's not in the menu. No, he's not on it's the menu. It's a purple menu. item. No. Well, I mean, most of the other French fries. He's a choice. part of the human anatomy. Ball, uh, stomach, guess? kidney, hair. He is a taste bud. Uh-huh. Oh. That is the weirdest thing. Wow. Isn't that fucking weird? <laughs> Isn't that, you did not why know that until tonight. Why, why you did not know that until tonight. Do you even know that? Grimace <laughs> is a taste bud. And Grimace the reason I know this bud. is that I've, uh, one of a uh, kid I used to work with at Verizon showed up at a Halloween party 12 years ago, probably longer ago than that, uh, dressed as Grimace. And it led to a whole, discretion, a whole discussion on Grimace and what Grimace actually was. Grimace is a taste bud. So is, that his name makes no sense. Because that. why is your name... What, is that what you do when you eat McDonald's? You Grimace? Yeah. Yeah. Should, like, it does not no. seem in retrospect like a thoughtful it, name. It, it, it seems like they did not think like this through. It should be like Splendor or Enjoyable, yeah. not or, Grimace. Or, <laughs> or, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this smells like shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Umami or a fucking... I don't know, yeah. something. Well, you Delicious. can't say that word in the 70s. They'd be like... That's true. They could have just named him Bud. That's a new word. Or umami, bud, or yeah. relatively new bud. word. There yeah. we go. Bud. That's a bud. way better name than <laughs> <Grimace>. <laughs> I didn't know what Grimace was. <laughs> yeah. I thought bud. he was like... You didn't even a, ask. He's like a Muppet. I yeah. thought he was like Ronald McDonald's ejaculation or something. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like trying to figure this purple clown. <laughs> purple jizz. Purple jizz. Yeah. Yeah. Purple oh, headed, <laughs> Ronald McDonald's purple-headed yoga <laughs> slinger. <laughs> 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 Fro- frozen yoga slinger. Let's McFlurry. Well, I guess the one saving grace Off the rails. Yep. So, <laughs> so the black phone. Uh, Scott Derrickson actually was supposed to be directing uh, for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He was supposed to originally direct that uh, Doctor Strange movie that came out a couple months ago. That Sam Raimi did, and uh, Sam Ra- Sam Raimi directed, and he left that movie due to creative differences because he wanted it to be scarier than it actually ended up being. And then he um, makes so he left, and then he made. Then he just wanted to make it. Whole, like, movie. what yeah. is wrong with you? Yep. I don't like this Scott yep. Dickinson guy. Yep. Derrickson. No, I know. <laughs> Dickinson. I, I prefer to say Dickinson. <laughs> uh, another cool... Uh, dude, okay. Just, uh, okay, one more thing. That Even more talent behind this movie. You know who designed the masks? Who? Tom Savini. Cool. I'm not saying the masks... Like, no, 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 I'm saying just like... Just a cool little fun fact. Yeah, all, all, all of the firepower behind this movie, it should have been way better than it was. It just wasn't great. I like the masks. It wasn't great. The masks were very good. The masks were good. I thought the masks were cool... I would have liked to his his face to have been fucked up underneath the masks or something weird or like this must have been like Red like, Dragon. Who? Yeah, <laughs> Tom Savini must have been working on this like right around because he got hit by a car recently. He got like really hurt, like fucked up. I remember hearing about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's okay. There's yeah. a way better movie with a ba- way better backstory. What? Red Dragon. Like, Red Dragon. Like, oh, that's a good movie. Well, I mean, obviously, yeah, of course, <laughs> the yeah, Thomas yeah, Harris novel. Yes. Dragons. Uh, a dragon. Manhunter? <laughs> you get it Man because Hunter. it is that's a dragon movie. behind Yeah, that's the first one with the... Uh, same story. The original movie, yeah. same story, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. What else we got on the black phone? I, 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 I got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> can if, you, I, if you had said good evening again, I would have lost. I would have died. <laughs> I was going to say, can I hang up the black phone? I don't know the black phone. Oh, I see. You should have saved that for the last line of the show, for sure. Well, that was my last mm. line. Other than um, good, <laughs> good evening. Here's, here's one more thing I'll say is that apparently, and don't be surprised if we get a sequel to this movie. There's yeah. no there's no story by Joe Hill it's a sequel, but uh, here's a direct quote from your boy Scott Dickinson, Andrew, okay? <laughs> Uh, Joe Hill pitched me a wonderful idea for a sequel to Black Phone that if this movie does well, I'm going to do it. He's got a great idea. I really liked it. Joe is very protective and personal about his material, but he came to me with the idea and I was like, that's how you do a sequel to Black Phone. That's terrific. So there's an idea in the pipeline and I think there's probably going to be a sequel to this movie Greenlit at some point. In the I actually would rather watch that movie because I feel like that movie has... Okay. Because it's not this movie. <laughs> I'm sure it would like be a similar movie. The Black Computer. The Black Computer. It's the, fax the Black machine. Fax Machine. The, black the fax fucking machine. pager yeah. beating the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and it shows why the phone is the uh, 
It's like the Brave Little Girl. Right? That movie is awesome. <laughs> Talk about a horror movie. movie. Um, the air, the air conditioning movie. scene. The, the most horrifying movie ever. Or when in the the dump, the like the, the, they're oh, oh, yeah. the poor cars. Yeah. Yeah. Like the magnetic murdered. crane just yeah. sucking them up into the sky. Like Blanky. Blanky. Blanky was the biggest <laughs> bitch of the whole crew. Of course, oh. like Blanky. I like the I like the radio. As a buff lad, let me hold the radio. Radio is us. Blanky. Nobody likes Blanky. Blanky's the worst. Yeah, Blanky's with his big nose. Like, what is that? Like, a, is this a heated blanket? Or what kind of blanket? Yeah, he's an electric. He's an electric blanket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Blanky sucks. All right. What else we got on the black phone? Thoughts, musings, <laughs> discussions. Good evening. <laughs> Statements of outrage. And I've, I've said my piece. I know, yeah. you have, you have been so outraged. I, I, got, I, can't, yeah. I can't hate it any more than I already said. Kat, are you going to offer anything else other than this limp-wristed <laughs> defense of this movie? I thought you liked this movie. Liked oh, it. is that like a segue no, that we're I, doing next year? No, next week? I, I, liked, no. I, like, I like thrillers, um, and I felt like this was a horror thriller that guessing what's going to happen next. Um, I liked the soundtrack. Hmm. I liked the <laughs> What? So Why are you laughing? What is so funny? Are you high, too? <laughs> Clearly you're not. <laughs> Why are you laughing so much? He's just like... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, and then it's like a real scenario that could potentially happen scares me a lot. That is right. true. We so do what we do know. We do know how scared you are of real life real situations. Things, yes. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I I felt like it was an entertaining movie. I didn't think it was terrible. Like you guys walked out of the theater, and be like, oh my god, that sucked. And I was like, dude, yeah, what? I still like, feel that. It way. Felt very long. Mm. It was extremely. How long was it? Dude? An, an hour, hour and forty minutes. Oh, it felt so much longer. I don't think so. No. That's fine. You don't have to think any of that. I liked. It. I thought it was entertaining. Period. Yeah. Yep. I don't think it's the worst it's movie I've ever seen. No. <laughs> it's not the worst movie I've ever seen, but it just it just feels like wasted potential. It could have been so much better. It's more the hype. Like if I had watched this movie on Netflix without like just it ran like I was like, Oh, what's this movie? And I put it on. Mm. I probably would be like, Hey Mike, you know what was a really good movie? The black phone. The black phone. But instead I was had this movie jammed down my throat for two years and I was like so excited. I was I was like, say, oh yeah. Sinister guy, Derrickson, Dickinson, whatever your name is. <laughs> Derrickson. And then uh, then I get this. No. I, I think it is. No, it, that's a, that's actually a great point that you brought that up. I completely forgot about that. This was initially supposed to come out in either February or March, yeah. and Blumhouse pushed it to the summer because they right. thought they had a huge hit on their hands. Yeah, I guess. But yeah, they I might not be the wrong. First reaction mm. for our audience is like really good. Yeah. Yep. So. Yeah. Not the, not the worst movie. Not the greatest movie by any long stretch. Which again is just a shame. So I'm glad you liked it, Cat. I I'm glad that hey. you uh, you didn't get a wasted trip to the movie theaters. But can I have popcorn on it too? Now now at least I, I feel I feel a little bit more normal that uh, you guys both didn't like it either. I feel like yeah. I'm not in the minority. I'm gonna start making those T-shirts, Mike. What? No more trailers. Mm, that's a great. We no, can I, we can I sell that like merch. That. It's cool. great. <laughs> yeah, honestly, don't. <laughs> that would be cool merch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming if you're listening to this episode, you've seen the trailer, you've seen the movie. So, yeah, no more trailers, though. And for the love of God, if you haven't seen anything about Nope, don't watch the trailer for it. Just watch the fucking movie. I like again, the trailer. Yeah, but movie. I saw the, all the trailers for Get Out. I saw all the trailers for Us. The difference is that uh, Jordan the Peele. Hmm. The man. And, and they do a very good job with the marketing. Like, a great marketing campaign for this movie would be <laughs> Kid Answers the Black Phone, and then you cut to Ethan Hawke stuffing a child into the back of his van with the black balloons coming out mm. and then you cut to like one of the maybe the ghost kids or the kid getting beat up in the thing and then that's the mm. and then you're like oh this is I feel like you'd still be disappointed because you'd be like all the best parts of the movie just were the well those are my much. favorite parts <laughs> <Like, yes. laughs> but at least it's you're giving less away and you're getting like some semblance like oh it's an abduction movie with some violence mm. instead of just the whole movie yeah that's a good final thought now you should say what. Uh, now you should say what you've been longing to say for the entire episode. <laughs> I haven't been longing to say good evening. That <laughs> good evening, Andrew signing off. <laughs> All right, that it for uh, Black Phone guys. I think yes. that's it. I think it's yeah. time for a good evening. Uh, so, a very uh, good evening. Anyway, well, here's where you can find our show next week. You can listen right where you're listening right now. But if you're looking for a new podcast platform, we're on Apple, we're on Google, we're on Spotify, Amazon, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker. Spreaker. Wherever else you may get your podcast, you can listen on YouTube. For some reason, you can listen on Facebook now. It's a weird fucking thing, but apparently you can do that. You do you. You listen wherever you want to listen. As long as you're listening, we appreciate the support. I have been Mike. I have been joined by my co-hosts, Andrew, Matt, and Kat. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. We'll see you next week with something Later. that may not be Bye. one whole movie discussion. Maybe multiple movies. A good evening. 
Goodbye. Good Goodbye. 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 Fuck off. Hey everyone, it's Mike from America's Hometown Horror, and just wanted to say thank you again for listening to another episode of our show, because of course, we would be nothing without you listeners. If you are interested in more local Plymouth podcasts, I would highly recommend you check out uh, some shows by our cohorts on the Inebriart Podcast Network. That's right, the Inebriart Podcast Network, folks. In addition to America's Hometown Horror, you can find the Inebriart Podcast, Bar Talk, Theme Park Legends, Retro Redoctopus, and Old Colony Cast. Head on over and give them a listen.